Today I'm going to let you know what my top 11 Fender amps are of all time, at least in my opinion. Here we go. Welcome back to the channel folks, this is Shane. So today's video I'm going to give you the 11 best Fender amplifiers in my opinion. I've owned and tested so many Fender amps over the years. If you go back through my YouTube channel and type in any of these with In The Blues after it, you'll find it online. So this comes from either owning them, testing them or reviewing them and also using them out not only at festivals but also at just regular gigs. So I've tested a number of these amplifiers in a number of different situations and they're only ones that I've tested. I haven't put ones on here that I haven't had a chance to play. That wouldn't be too cool. Just to let you know, this video isn't sponsored by anyone except for you guys. If you enjoy what I do, please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. If we get the video to 1,000 likes, that would be amazing and it greatly helps the channel. If you wanna find out about these amplifiers, links will be down in the description to some of these in your part of the world. Let's get into it. So the first amplifier I'm putting on this list is one that I own personally and I shouldn't have got rid of, but back in the day I had a really bad back and it was quite heavy. This is the Fender Supersonic 60. And this will also apply if you're a big fan of the 22s, but in my opinion, the Supersonic 60 was one of the best plug and play amps Fender have ever made. It had a great two voiced clean channel. You could go from like a basement style clean for that tweedy type sound, or you could get more of that black face traditional Fender tone. And then you could get over to the drive channel, which had, or the burn channel, and get just some really great lead tones and rhythm tones. It was a two gain stage drive channel. You could just get so much out of it. It came with a Celestian Vintage 30, which in hindsight now, I kind of wish I had to try it with an Eminent Swamp Thing or a Texas Heat Speaker, but it sounded great. It was one of the most plug and play and versatile amps Fender have ever made only to discontinue them. I think they're not around anymore. If you can find one or if you own one, consider yourself pretty lucky. Now that I, my, I don't have those back problems anymore, I'd love to get another Supersonic 60. I just think they're fantastic amps. The 22 watt versions are a bit smaller physically. They don't have quite the same bloom of sound as the 60 because when you go between the six V6 output tubes and the six L6 ones, there's quite a huge difference in just the overall presence and oomph and clean headroom of the amp. But the 22 watt is great for smaller rooms. So yeah, if you've got a 22 or a 60, they're great amps, very versatile. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The next amplifier on this list is one that I had a chance to gig with while I was in San Francisco about four years ago. And it might be the only solid state amplifier on this list, but it's great. If you can find one of these on the used market, they're absolutely worth it. This is the Fender Deluxe Plus 112. Now this is a two channel 90 watt single 12 inch speaker amplifier. And even though it's solid state, it was made in the 90s, this was back at a time where solid state amps were still built extremely well and they were using quality speakers. These amplifiers absolutely peel the paint off the wall. The thing most people want when they get a Fender amplifier is that beautiful clean tone and you get that in spades with this amplifier. No doubt about it, it has that classic Fender sound and being that it's a solid state and 90 watt amplifier, you get lots and lots of clean headroom. They handle pedals extremely well. I remember running my VS Audio Royal Flush into this as well as a, a delay pedal when I played and it was plenty loud for anywhere we played and it was just like any other Fender amp I'd plugged into. So even though this is a solid state amplifier, don't hold it against it. If you get a chance to play one of these things and plug in and turn up, you'll be quite shocked. And the drive channel is also fairly usable. It has this contour control which basically scoops or adds more mids. So you can get anything from like a crunchy metal sound all the way through to an off clean blues tone. Overall, these are one of the best amplifiers on the used market that you can find. If you live in North America, you'll have a better time finding them than you will in other parts of the world, at least in my experience. No list like this would be complete without adding maybe the most recorded amplifier of all time, the Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb Reissue. Now these are great amplifiers to a point. Once you get them up past about six, they just get more saturated. Some people will love that and some people won't. So for me personally, I actually owned a 65 and a 68. The 68 had less clean headroom than the 65, so I ended up keeping the 65. Now these were both reissues, obviously not the originals, but both amplifiers are great when you get them to their sweet spot anywhere past there and they start to struggle a little bit in some rooms, but they sound beautiful. They got this really nice bloom on the low end, the Fender chime on the top end, a little bit of a scooped mid sound and they sound great. So if you're looking for maybe the most iconic and classy Fender tone, 
check out the 65 reissues. They take pedals extremely well. And yeah, what can I tell you? I really regret getting rid of mine. I kind of was doing gigs where I needed more output and louder amplifiers, but probably should have held onto that one. So my friend Ross, if you're watching this and you sell it, let me know, I'll buy it back. <laughs> Up next is an amplifier that totally blew me away and I was so close to buying it. It's about as close as you're gonna get to buying a Marshall while still buying a Fender. So this is the Fender Bass Breaker 30R. Now I should preface this by saying I'm not a big fan of that range. I find the build quality to be pretty poor with the exception of a couple of the amplifiers. The 15 is really good and this 30R. The rest of them, I've seen so many of them fail. We shot a video of one of the other amplifier models and it actually blew up on camera, so that was great. But the 30R, just in terms of straight up tone, has maybe the most musical drive channel out of all of the amplifiers on this list. Sort of debatable between the Supersonic and this one, but the Bassbreaker 30R is as close to my Marshall DSL 40CR as it's gonna get without it being that amplifier. So it was kind of pointless for me to buy one being that I already have a Marshall, but if you don't already have a Marshall and you want to get a Fender, this is a great amplifier, man. I'll leave a link to my demo somewhere up here. I'll leave links in the description so you can also check it out. I have to put this amplifier on the list as I was a huge advocate for it for many years. I purchased the Fender Mustang 3 and 4 version 2 and I used to gig with them extensively. We also used to have them going up against the actual amplifiers in blind test videos back in the day. So if you've been subscribed for a long time, you might remember those. I did a full series called Mustang Monday, which is still on YouTube as well. And you can download all the custom patches at guitarpedaldemos.com. It's completely free. So these Fender Mustang amplifiers were great. They were gig worthy in terms of their projection and sound. Later though, unfortunately, the GTs weren't quite as good in terms of having that full big sound but they recovered with the GTX, so they're on their way back to being great again. But the Fender Mustang V2, just a really solid amplifier. I, I don't know, it's something about, they're a little heavier than the newer ones, and I think some of that weight, whether it's in the speaker or in the cabinet, does something really positive to the sound. Sometimes just making something lighter for the sake of it doesn't always work out well. And it's also the programming. But if you're looking for a digital modeling amplifier, I'm sure many people who are watching this probably expected this amplifier to be on the list, but the Fender Mustang version twos are phenomenal. They sound great and they're almost indistinguishable from the actual amplifiers if you sit down and dial them in the right way. So overall, single 12 or two 12s, blisteringly loud. You can get any sort of tones you want out of them. Unfortunately, the support has been discontinued for them, but they're still great amps. So I'm putting them on the list ahead of any of their others. This next amplifier was one that I owned for a number of years. I had a chance to not only play some festivals with them, but I took these amps into rooms I probably shouldn't have because it just sounded so damn good. This is the Fender Super Reverb Reissue Amplifier. These are loaded with four 10-inch Jensen speakers, and man, it was a fantastic amplifier. The biggest problem I had with it and the reason why I ended up selling it was I have a fairly small car. It didn't actually fit in the back. I couldn't cover it up or anything either. It had to go in the back seat and it was always an awkward thing to get in and out of the car. So, man, I tell you what though, just in terms of straight up clean tone, these might be, this might be the best out of all of them. They're just a beautiful amplifier in that regard. Much like the Deluxe Reverb, they do have a sweet spot. If you get it up past about six, they start just getting a little bit flubby. So you have to make sure you, you get it to its sweet spot if you're allowed to turn up that loud, of course. But most venues won't want your amps that loud, but we can get away with it in a few of the places we play out here. So it was always a good fun time. And if you can get it to that sweet spot, you can just even use a volume boost pedal or a clon or anything like that to push it over the edge and it's gonna sink. Some of the best tones I've ever had on stage was my Little Crow guitar and my Fender Super Reverb. It was just some of the best tones of all time, at least for what I like. Up next, we're gonna talk about an amplifier that's become my go-to for a lot of gigs where I'm taking my pedal board and I want something light and loud. And that's the Fender Tone Master Twin. These amplifiers are spectacular. I really love the fact that they're as light as they are and they sound as big as they do. Now, being that they're a digital modeling amp, there are some small trade-offs. They don't take pedals as well as say a conventional twin or any of the other valve amplifiers on this list, but they still take them fairly well. What they don't do well is sort of pushing the clean tone over the edge. It doesn't really do that very well. And twins aren't designed 
inherently to get that dirty when you turn them up. There are of course some that do that and I actually had one with the drive channel and there's also the red knob one that goes back a long time. But in terms of this, this actual Fender Tone Master Twin, it's designed just to stay clean and I love how loud and full it sounds. I've had a chance to play this out at festivals and a couple of club gigs and it just sounded great. So overall, the Fender Tone Masters are a great range of amplifiers and I believe hopefully there'll be some more coming out pretty soon. I love the Tone Master Twin. The clean headroom and volume versus weight ratio is off the charts. Definitely one of my favorite amps and for what it does, that one thing that it does, it does extremely well, so check them out. Next on the list has to be the Fender Princeton amplifiers. Now back in the day, I always preferred the Blues Junior over the Princeton, but I don't anymore. I think the Fender Princeton is more suited to what I like. You get a beautiful, classic, clean Fender tone that can be driven just by turning it up. Sure, you're gonna have limitations on its headroom, but if you go for the 12 inch speaker version, it gets a whole lot louder. And man, these amps cook. I've done a number of videos of these over the years, probably five or six different types of Princeton amplifiers. And my good friend, Dr. Rick from the channel, he used to also have one of these and it's some of the best classic Fender tones you can get. I think Dr. Rick was heavily inspired by Landau at that time. One of the cool things about the Fender Princeton reverbs is their reverb circuit sounds phenomenal. I think it sounds just as good or better than most of the ones on this list. And they also have a built-in tremolo. So if those things are important to you, this is a really great choice, but these won't fill every single room. They're definitely nowhere near as loud as some of the others on this list, nor do they have that full projection of sound, but they're extremely musical. They record well, they do lots and lots of good stuff. I think coming up sometime in the future, I'll no doubt end up buying one. I'll probably opt for one of the ones with a 10 inch speaker, just to have something at home that I can kind of crank up and have some fun with. But overall, I think these are great. If you do have a Princeton, let me know if you went for the 10 inch or the 12 inch in the comments below. Up next on the list is a bit of a two in one, just to save you guys some time. This is the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe as well as the Fender Hot Rod DeVille. So let's talk about the Hot Rod Deluxe first. The old ones were great. They always had that great clean channel, but they kind of suffered from having what I consider to be a pretty lackluster drive channel. You lose a lot of the low end and the mids. It just wasn't very nice. The version fours are the best they've ever been. And this also carries across to their Hot Rod DeVille. So the DeVille is a 60 watt amplifier. You can get it with either 212s or 410s. I think they still make the 410s ones even today, but they're just great. They're one of the most usable amplifiers as a plug and play situation now. They really are great. If you are looking for cleaner, higher headroom amplifiers, go for the DeVille, but you also get more weight and that might be a deal breaker. But 40 watts is plenty, right? So the Hot Rod Deluxe is one of the most used amplifiers out there. I think they're one of the highest selling tube amps ever because they're just functional. The clean channels are great and now finally the drive channels are great. Now, even though the drive channels do sound far better in the version fours, I'm sure most people will still opt to use the clean channel or even the drive channel with their favorite pedals to get the sound that they want. So let me know which way you prefer to use them and why if you do have one of the new Hot Rod Deluxe or DeVille's version four, I really feel like they're the best they've been just in terms of straight up usability and functionality. One of the best tones I ever heard in a room was when we got to test out the Fender DeVille version four. Plugged into the drive channel, turned it up, we were both looking at each other like, this is unreal, it is so good. So definitely check them out if you have a chance. Up next is an amplifier that I personally own and use and I've had two of these over the last 10 years. I ended up selling one, realized I'm an idiot. I went back and got another one. This is a couple of years later, but I realized what I'd done was stupid. Now, I'm gonna say that I don't think the stock speaker in the Fender Blues Deluxe is very good, so I always opt to change those out. A lot of people hate the drive channel on the Fender Blues Deluxe, and that's because it doesn't have a lot of gain. It's not quite up there with the Hot Rod Deluxe in terms of its gain staging and voicing and all of that. I'll do a video coming up about that, so hang in there. So I've got to tell you, I went down to my local music shop just before the lockdown started here, and it's still going, by the way, and I got to play the Fender Blues DeVille. It's a 410s tweed amp. And you don't see these around very often, and I don't need another amp. I didn't need it. I went back the next day with Dr. Rick. I said, I tried this amp. It's great. So. I think I'm gonna go get it. He goes, I'll come down with you, we'll check it out. We get in there and a guy's boxing it up and leaving with it. So I'm spewing, I, I really feel like these are some of the most usable amps out there. 
Now, I gotta tell you, the Tweed Amp definitely sounds different to the standard Hot Rod Deluxe. I look at it this way, the Tweed Amp has a little bit more poke in the upper mids, and it has a maybe a less pleasing sound on its own, but in the mix it works really well. But the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe has a bit more of a modern sound to it, and it still sounds great in the mix, but it has a smoother sound to it. So you can go either way, but for me personally, I love my Blues Deluxe. I love it with the Swamp thing. I, I've compared it up against two rock amplifiers and all that kind of stuff. And nearly every time I take that amp out and play it, people go, man, that amp sounds great. Interestingly enough though, when it comes to the Fender Blues DeVille, you can get that clean channel to break up just by turning up the volume control. And if you throw some humbuckers into it, it's gonna break up even sooner. So that might be a deal breaker, but it also is a sought after sound depending on your particular requirements. So, and I would also say, if you want an amplifier with a little bit more poke in the mix, the standard Blues DeVille will probably do that a little bit more, but if you want that smoother sound with plenty of headroom, it's much of a muchness, really. Let me know which one you prefer and why, if you've had a chance to play them live or at home or at a shop, but both of these amps are great, which is why I've bought a few of them over the years. Last on this list is an amplifier that I had a chance to play in a shop. I'll tell you a quick little story here. I played it, I thought this is the best sounding Fender amp I'd ever played, hands down, like it wasn't even close. I then asked the guy, oh, how much is this? And he goes, oh, the price tag's on the top. I had a look, I was like, oh, I can afford this, this is all right. And then I realized that wasn't the right price tag and falling down from a guitar. <laughs> and I realized it's out of my price range. But a friend of mine ended up buying this and this is the Fender 64 Custom Shop Caesar Diaz Vibro Verb. And this is with the Stevie Ray Vaughan mods. This amp totally rocks. This is one of the few times where I'd plugged into something and just gone, this sounds, I love the Fender tone, but this sounds like it's on a whole other level. If you have a chance to find one of these in your part of the world, go check them out. These things totally rock. There's a few key reasons why these were so expensive. They're not only made in the custom shop in Corona, California, but they're hand built. The, everything from the cabinets all the way up to the way that they're produced is completely different. Having those Stevie Ray Vaughan mods in there just makes the amplifier bloom. So these are only a 40 watt amplifier, but they have a huge sound thanks to the 15 inch speaker. These speakers sound phenomenal. I think I'm a big fan of these 15 inch speakers. A while back I almost bought a twin, a custom twin with a 15, because I had my heart set on that until I realized, man, this is way too expensive. I'd love to try one of these again because it has been a number of years. Much like the Super Reverb, the Hot Rod DeVille, and a few of the other amps on this list, we also get the 6L6 power tubes, which gives it that big full sound. But in combination with the speaker, in combination with those SRV mods, this thing is the best Fender amp I've ever played hands down. Now, if you want to find out about any of these amps that are still in production, I'll leave some links down to Toman and Sweetwater in the description below to help support the channel at no extra cost to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. My name's Shane. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. So with this particular list, these are my personal favorites out of the ones that I've tested and owned. Most of these, with the exception of the last one, the Fender 64 Custom Shop Vibro Verb, I've had a chance to play live or had a chance to test in a full capacity, whether it's just a full review of it or whatever, I've, my friends own it, I've had a chance to do a back-to-back -back comparison. I haven't added anything onto this list that I haven't played or owned. I think that would be disingenuous. So I really feel like these are my personal favorites. I'm sure there's some that I've missed just because I've tested and owned so much gear over the years and borrowed stuff from shops and loaned off friends, but I really feel like this is the list that pretty much speaks to me. There is one I'm gonna kind of think about throwing in here, and that was the Eric Clapton Tremolux amplifier range. Those are really, really great, but I still prefer everything else on this list over it, but that's just for my particular taste. If you're a big fan of the Tweed amps, odds are you're probably saying, hey, you should have put a custom or an old twin on there or something like that, a Tweed twin, but I've tried those as well, and I still prefer these. So let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.